Welcome in Kelly Fassel. Let's hear the program here on MMA Odds Breaker. Uh, just had a loss in the UFC against uh, Lauren Murphy back here on February 21st. We're about a month removed from that now. Um, first, take us through the fight that night. Take, take us through walking to the cage. Uh, by the way, for people at home, it was her first UFC fight. It was her fourth professional fight. Um, and all of a sudden, she's on the big stage. So take us through backstage and tell you, hey, by the way, now you're up next. You get ready to walk out. Uh, what, what's it like? Uh, you know, I just tried to think of it as any other fight. You know, I try not to let the hype of being in the UFC become a, a monster in of itself. You know, cause sometimes that will get you, you know, uh, focused. You're, it'll get your focus off. So um, I just kind of tried to just imagine it as just any other any other fight. You just you walk out to the same cage, same cage you train in every day. And um, and I try not to let the hype of of the UFC, you know, get to me. So uh, we just, you know, focused on um, we had a, a little bit of time to come up with a strategy. So we just kind of went over that in the back um, and uh, just kind of focused on what I was going to do, not what could happen. Um, just stay on, you know, solid on our game plan. And then uh, and then we walked out and. Um, it was just kind of surreal because it just happened so fast, you know, just how quickly the week went by. I just I don't even think I had time to really process it, you know, and the whole week I was so worried about the weight cut that I didn't even have time to get nervous for the fight, you know. So uh, walking out to the actual fight, I was like, OK, this is I'm I'm here. I'm doing this, this is why this is what I've been working for, you know. So uh, we walk out. I walk out to the cage and um, I think it hit me when I saw Bruce Buffer. That's when I was like, oh, I'm in the UFC. <laughs> it's when he's announcing, you know. So, um, but yeah, the the first round started. Um, we exchanged uh, heavy hands, you know. I felt like I had some powerful exchanges with her. I felt good that first round. Um, my nose started leaking on that first round. He was, you know, fractured at the by the end of the the first round. But it wasn't. To the point where it was bothering me. I've I've fractured my nose before. Um, I've broken it before. But the second round is when I felt the orbital bone kind of like I felt more structural damage where it really started bothering me. At the end of the second round, I was like, I feel myself fading a little bit. And I uh, tried to protect my face a little bit more, I think. And then third round, honestly, I don't remember much of it. <laughs> So I have to go back and, and watch it. Um, I know it got to the ground. I know I kind of um, was just on survival mode in in that round. And I, I think I gassed. So um, once uh, once I get closer to being able to train, I'm going to watch it, watch my fight and see what happened. Uh, emotionally, between the second and third round, what happened to you? Because now, you, like you just said, you felt yourself fading your orbital bone is starting to hurt. Your nose is starting to hurt. You're starting to feel it. You're getting tired. You're starting to feel it. You're starting to fade a little bit. Emotionally, what were you going through between the second and third round? I think I was just on autopilot. So uh, I don't remember feeling, you know, fear or like anything. I just remember being like, just go in there, just do it. Just go in there, third round, make it happen. Um, honestly, I don't even, I didn't know which corner. I thought Terrell came in in between the second and third round, but it was actually my other coach, Raul, my, the cut man. And, uh, you know, he said he tried talking to me and it just kind of like nothing was sinking in. So I don't remember what he said. I thought it was Terrell. So, you know, I, I'm not really exactly sure exactly what was going on in, in my, in my head in between the second and third. I just, I think I was just on just like, just go mode, just autopilot, just get in there and do it, you know? You train for 12 weeks, you know, eight, 12 weeks, whatever, you get ready for these fights. You have game plans and, and your coaches and yourself and then puts together these game plans to get ready for the fight. And you know whether or not, <clears throat> excuse me, the game plan works by winning or losing. So by you losing that fight, you can say the game plan didn't work, whatever, whatever the reason. So <clears throat> what was the game plan going in for Lauren Murphy? Well, um, you know, I, I took this fight on eight days notice. So um, the – week previous uh because i was getting i was about to start a fight camp for a fight that was scheduled at the end of march so i hadn't even started that fight camp yet um i was working on 
building up my shifts at work. So I'd work a, a, an 80 hour work week. I just finished w- working an 80 hour work week because I was building up my trades so that later during closer to my other fight, I could take off work. So uh, I worked 80 hours and then I had a couple days off and then I was working my regular shift and then I got the call and my manager was like, do you want to take this fight at 135? You know, and I was like, uh, I'm 155 right now. Just because, you know, with with working that much and just not be able to like really focus on training or, you know, um, getting in shape, uh, I was I was a little heavy. So uh, I was like, well, probably not because I'm 20 pounds out. And so he's like, it's for the UFC. And I was like, okay, we have to make it happen. So. um, So the game plan going into it was I've never cut 20 pounds in in a week before. And so we didn't know how that was going to affect my energy how um how fast I would gas and with coming off of not really being in a fight camp I was training I was training after work um uh and on the days I had off uh you know previous to that work week uh so I was I was still you know kind of in shape but not fight shape so the the plan was to kind of keep it standing and to have me control the pace uh and um I was going to try to control where it went. I thought she was going to try to wrestle more because the stuff that I did see, I thought she went for takedowns a little bit more. I was trying, I was going to expect that in the first and second round. And I don't think she really brought that to the third. So, um, so I was just going to try to outbox her and um, try to stuff her on the takedown. And she didn't really go for a takedown. She, she kept it standing too. So, uh, she did a good job coming out different each round too. I felt, I remember that. I remember, you know, she was different the second round from the first round and then she did something different. She went for a takedown on the third round. So, um, so yeah, she, she came out a little bit different every round, but yeah, my, my strategy, our game plan was to outbox her, keep it standing, keep moving, keep, keep changing angles. And, um, and for me not to wrestle because, you know, when you wrestle, just, it takes it out of you when you're not in shape. So now that you've been in there with her, <clears throat> you had eight days. Imagine if you get eight weeks. Do you think it'll be a different yeah. fight? I mean, obviously it'd be a different fight at that point, but do you think you win at this point now because you've kind of had time with Lauren one time in the cage? Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely think, um, you know, having a longer fight camp, longer time to prepare, be in shape, be able to wrestle without having to worry about being tired. Um, yeah, I just think all of that combined, I would come out completely different. So, what's your uh, is your new weight class going to be one thirty five now that you you've actually made the weight, you've gotten in there, or are you going to keep staying at one forty five? No, one thirty five is when I want to be at pro. I was doing one forty five um, on my amateurs because working full time and everything, I thought it would be too hard to manage that weight cut. So I could train in a fight camp and get to one forty five just just by training. So now that I'm you know, once I went pro, I, I wanted to cut down to 35s to be more competitive. So I had a title at 145. We did that to kind of make myself more marketable. So I had, I'd hold the title at 45 and 135. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll stick at 135. But um, I usually get there more healthy, like over six weeks. <laughs> so and the UFC is usually pretty good about um, uh, uh, short notice fights, bringing somebody in. And then yeah. having um, saving, not saving the car in this case, but like saving the fight. Uh, and they, they always usually promise you at least another fight to kind of get your, your full due. Did they say anything to you about that already? That don't we're going to try and get your fight later in the fall or, or they're not going to, you know, what's, what's going on with, with the UFC side of it? Yeah, I have uh, three more fights. So, yeah, they, they got me. They gave me a contract. So that was awesome. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times it's like one one fight or two fights and then, We'll see how you do because we just need it at the last minute. So that's good you got four fights out of it. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So now that you're in and you've gotten through that first time and saw Bruce Buffer call your name, your nerves won't be so bad going in the second time. And you have a full yes. training camp. Uh, you've yes. seen the other girls in the in the UFC. You've seen the other girls at the weight class. Obviously, you know, 135 is, is changing uh, at the top of the heap right now. It keeps changing every fight um, who the champ is. But who do you th- what do you think you fit in? Within the ranking system, you're in the top ten, you're in the top five, you're in the top twenty. Like, where do you see yourself being fit, fitting in with the girls' with division? Oh, I don't really know. I just kind of um, whoever they give me, I'll just that's my main focus, you know. So 
whoever they say, this is who you're fighting next. I don't care who it is. I'm going to rise to that occasion, you know? So, um, I don't, I don't want to say like I'm better than anybody else or, you know, like, you know, like rank myself, you know? So, um, I, I just, whoever they put in front of me, I'm going to, you know, train specifically for that person and, uh, train to win. So what's your weight like right now? I know you've been, obviously can't train as much cause the eye and the, and the nose and stuff, but what they, what's your weight like right now? Yeah, probably in the one fifties again. Cause I, I haven't been able to even like what I, I got surgery on my orbital. And so they had me, so I, I didn't, wasn't able to exercise at all. So I've just been kind of like sitting around eating tacos. So. Yeah, 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 I get it. I've been there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what did they say? How long on the orbital bone before you can start training again? Six weeks. Six weeks from surgery. And how long ago was surgery? Two weeks ago. Okay. So you have another Coming month. You have another month. Okay. And then you'll be, you have to go back and get cleared before you can start getting punched in the face again though, right? Like you can do yeah. some things, but you can't get hit yet. And it might be another three, three, four weeks after that before you get punched. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Kelly, thanks for coming on here. I appreciate it. I know it's a Sunday fun day for you. You're supposed to be laying around in your pajamas. <laughs> so I appreciate you coming through here and giving us some time. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Good luck with the, the healing on your orbital bone. And we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye.